In this video, I want to do something a bit different. I want to show you how you can recreate the kind of look and feel of a 1980s demo scene program. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you the demo and then you'll know what I'm talking about rather than me trying to describe it. Here's the demo. So 1980s, we're talking about 8-bit computers, and there were a brilliant bunch of people who were able to squeeze the last bit of possible performance out of these computers. Every cycle counted. Uh, they were doing funny things with the hardware, with the video hardware, with the sound hardware. They were just pushing these things to the absolute limits. And sometimes they just seemed to do things that would have been impossible if you knew about the setup of the system and how many colors it had or how many sprites it had or you know what, how many resolution scan lines. It had. And so they were amazing. Now, what I want to do in this video is create the look and feel of that. And obviously we're using a PC today with much, much more power. So we're not going to be trying to squeeze every last little clock cycle out, but we are just going to have fun writing some effects uh, that are able to kind of mimic the look and feel of this. Now, why are we doing that? Well, we're going to do it using a game uh, framework, a game engine framework. And really that's a few reasons doing one is it's just fun a fun project for learning a new framework for learning a new game engine it's fun because it's a programming exercise as well and also it can open up the door to maybe you wanting to think about writing some games now all these game engines allow you to you know kind of package up as a as a game on windows on mac even on android on ios and you can put them on the various stores so there's a lot of opportunity here now i'm going to use one particular game engine however it's just this idea of you know recreating something from bygone days as a learning exercise to be able to go forward and do something else so if you want to find out more please let me explain Okay, so let's get into this. To make this demo scene from the 1980s, we're going to be using a 2D game network called Love2D. Go to love2d.org to download it. It allows you to write 2D games using Lua. All you need to do is go over to where it says 64-bit zipped if you're on Windows, download that file and unzip it into a folder. And then we're gonna put the source code in that folder and it's as simple as that. This site of course has all the documentation and everything you need and I'll show you how to run a program with it when we get round to our first demo after we write our first bit of code in a moment. Before we go any further, let me tell you a bit about the Best Air computer desk with Music Sync Lights. Level up your setup with the Best Air Flow Vibe L-shaped gaming desk. Built for serious gamers, this desk features a carbon fiber textured surface and shelves for your PC, PS5 or other gaming setup. The frame is made of durable steel providing the highest level of support stability and long lasting durability. There is space for dual monitors, full-size keyboards and your controllers, plus handy headset hooks along with cup holders. Bring your setup to life with the upgraded Music Sync LED system. The lights can move and flow to the beat of your music and gaming audio. There is also a special mode for racing games, which can sync the lights with engine revs, collisions and tyre screeches. Plus, when watching movies, the sync lighting helps set the mood and pull you into the story. The Best Air Flow Vibe Gaming Desk also includes a built-in power outlet with three main sockets plus USB charging ports. Rated at 1500 watts, there's enough power for all your devices. To upgrade your game and your style, use the link in the description and get an additional free blind box gift with your order. Okay, let's get back to our project. Okay, so the first thing to write is the code for the checkered background. So here is the Lua code really is quite simple. Now the first thing to know is there are two important functions. In fact, there's a third one which we're going to deal with a little later. One is love.load. This gets run once at the beginning. Once the program loads up, it kind of does the initialization phase. And love drop draw gets called every time a new frame is being drawn. So here it sets up a window 800 by 600 and then it just works out the width and the height of the uh, window and therefore how many columns and rows you're going to have based on the tile size 
for your checkered background. Then every time a new frame is drawn, it calls love.draw and simply we just go through the number of rows, the number of columns, and we alternate here to whether it's a dark square or a light square, setting the color accordingly. And then basically we just draw a triangle at the X and Y coordinates at the tile size by tile size because it's square and then just move our way through uh, 64 pixels at a time. Really quite simple code. Let me show you how to run that now. Okay, so when you unzip the uh, Love2D zip file that I showed you to download, you basically get all these files. Here is the actual main program, love.exe. There's some DLLs. Here you can see the uh, Lua interpreter. And those just come in that folder. And what I've done is I've copied over all the source code into different folders below that one. This is the main demo, and these are the different steps that I'm going to show you how we build up the thing one by one. So what I'm going to run now is demo step one, because we've just created that checkered background. So here on the command prompt, all you do is you go ahead and you want to run love.exe and then we want 80 scene demo step one you just give it the name of the folder and it will go ahead and run it and there we can see just a checkered background no movement just a simple checkered background now that just gave us a static background we want that background now to move around a bit so how do we do that well basically we need to have a few more variables here that talk about how we want that uh, movement to be uh, controlled, the speed and the amplitude of it. Love.load remains the same, love.draw remains the same, but now we have love.update. Now love.update is also called every frame, but it's not designed for updating the screen, it's designed to update the current state of things. So what we do in here is we basically work out an offset for the X and the Y of that checkered background by just using the bounce speed and the bounce amplitude, but using sine and cosine, so that gives us a nice wave uh, movement on the background there. And the Y axis is slightly different, so it's not just the same for both left and right, up and down. You get slightly different for up and down. That gives you that nice wave uh, motion. Okay, let me show you that code running now. Okay, so we'll run it again using the Love Executable, and now we can see that that background is moving just as we have programmed it. The next thing to do is add in that sphere. Now we're not using the GPU, we're not doing any fancy GPU rendering or shaders or anything like that. We're just gonna draw this with lines the old fashioned way. So there's a bit of maths involved in this, so we're just gonna go through it quickly. Basically here in love.load, we wanna create all the points prehand, so we're beforehand, setting all the points for the sphere so we don't have to calculate it every time. And the way we do this is we basically plot longitude and latitude coordinates. So here's the code for it. Uh, I'm going to explain the code now uh, and then you can come back and refer to this code if you want to see how the pseudo code translates into actual code. But notice at the end here basically we create a table, that's kind of Lua talk for an array, with the different points in it. So the way it works is that it generates 3D coordinates of points on a sphere using spherical coordinates, specifically by looping over lines of longitude and lines of latitude. The three things we need to know are the radius of the sphere, theta, which is the polar angle from the Z axis. Now theta runs from zero to pi, top to bottom. So think of it as the latitude sweeping from the top to the bottom and as plotting points as we go along. And then phi, that's really the bearing angle from the x-axis, and it runs from 0 to 2 pi, so a full rotation around the vertical axis. This is the longitude. Now, that's all very well talking about the spherical coordinates, but how do you turn that into x, y, and z? Well, basically, there's a nice little maths formula that gives you x, y, and z based on phi and theta and some sine and cosine. So therefore, each point that we plot lays on the sphere, which has a radius of r. And you can go back and look at the code and see these calculations going on inside of the code. And a couple of other things we need to add here in love.update, we want to make sure that the sphere doesn't roll off the screen, it bounces. So basically, we just do some checking here to make sure we're with inside the bounds. And if we are, we just change the direction. And also, there is a project 3D function here, which we're going to use when we come to drawing this sphere, because we want to take an X, a Y, and a Z 
and turn it into just an X and a Y. This is how you turn a 3D scene into a 2D scene. This is a very, very simplistic way of doing it. And what's this plus 400 here? Well, it offsets the Z depth so that the camera, the point of view, is always placed at minus 400, which keeps everything in front of us. And then we don't get any problems with dealing with negative numbers on the Z and, and divide by zero when it's on zero and all that. So this is just a simplistic way. Keep it always in the positive in front of you. And then you get a simple projection from 3D into 2D. Now, when it comes to drawing it, we're in love.draw now. What you need to do is go through all of these points that we pre-calculated and you need to pick a point and then you need to connect it to its neighbor on the longitude and its neighbor on the latitude. So you take the next point and then the next point along the number of columns we've got. So you're kind of jumping through the grid there. And then we do the projector 3D to go from X, Y, Z to just X and Y. And then we draw a line from the first point, X1, Y1 to X2, Y2. And later on from X1, Y1 to X3, Y3. So we're going in both directions to start to form up the wireframe of the sphere. Okay, so let's see that running. Okay, so let's run that now. Now what we can see is the sphere bouncing around on the moving checkered background, but you can see the sphere is just from one point of view, looking down straight on it like that. That's not what we want. We want that sphere to also uh, rotate as well. But now we can see the sphere is drawn in a wireframe bouncing around on the screen. So we don't want that sphere to look like that. We need to add in some rotation to that sphere, make it much more interesting. So we need a function that performs 3D rotation of a point X, Y and Z around the X and Y axis and returns new rotated coordinates. And so we're going to need the angle for the X axis rotation and the angle for the Y axis rotation. So basically up, down, left and right. Now there are some mass formulas that do this for you. You can find this in all kinds of 3D geometry books. There's a matrix there and that's how you do the calculations. Here's how you do it for the Y, but we can convert that into code. You don't necessarily have to understand it. This is just how you do it. It's uh, some other clever people have worked out all of the clever maths for how you do 3D uh, rotation of things. So in the code, we take that idea and we rotate around the X axis using that formula. We rotate around the Y axis using that formula and then we return the new X, Y and Z coordinates. So you can go in with the original point and then say, I want to move it by this much on the uh, horizontal, this much on the vertical, and then it will just rotate the point. If you do that for all the points, the sphere will rotate. And then one last thing is that when we're drawing it now, so this is back into love.draw, we don't just take the point, we want to rotate the point first, then project it into 2D, that gets us our original X and Y, and then we draw the two lines coming out from it. So again, we rotate them by the same amount, we project them, and then we draw a line, and then we draw a line. So slightly different to the last previous iteration, because now we're rotating the points before we project them from 3D to 2D, and then before we draw the lines. Okay, let's show you that running. Okay, so let's run that now, and we can see that the sphere is also now rotating just as we wanted. And finally, two little quick things to do. We need to add some music. So here in love.load, you basically, all this is handled by the Love framework. I'm saying, look, I've got an MP3 file here. Just play it and make sure it loops so it doesn't stop. Three lines of code, that gives you the background music. Pretty cool. And then finally, for the colors of the, of the sphere so that they rotate, we're just basically going to be changing the RGB, red, green, blue, and again, using uh, a sine wave so that it goes up and down in a nice... Uh, cyclic fashion uh, and looks very nice as it goes through the different colors. Okay, back to that final demo. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. Are you going to try to recreate your own kind of 80s demo scene? Do you like Lua? Do you have a preferred other game engine? Love to hear all your comments. Uh, below. Well, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around and subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.